my friends. Thank you for joining me today. I am so glad you're here. We're going to be chatting about all things like base products today. So the primers, the foundations, and the concealers, and the powders too. Um, and all in the drugstore. I feel like in terms of questions I get asked just by individuals or people I know just in my life, it will always seem to come back to foundations and just a sense of overwhelm in the drugstore. And so that's what I want to talk about today. Some of these things you've heard me talk about before, but I thought, what about a nice little one-stop shop kind of video where you can tune in and you can hear what I have to say about these products and you can determine what's right for you. Because I do feel in this video, there's going to be something that's right for everybody. You know what's right for me right now? blush. I need more blush. So I'm wearing this one from the ColourPop collection, the Good Energy one from the 1111 collection. Let's deepen it up a little bit. It seemed really right at first, like it definitely showed, but as the look rolled on, I couldn't see it as much. A little bit of this toasty stuff. What's this one? Message me right there. And my lip today... I've got on a little bit of the Dior Lip Glow Balm that looks kind of pinky, but the overarching color that's showing is what I put on top, which is this Milani Blackberry Agave Lip Oil from the Fruit Fetish line. Guys, I slept hard last night. Slept hard. I had a migraine the day before last, and I slept well that night too, but I just kind of knew going throughout the day, like I had this feeling of, if you're a migraine sufferer, you kind of know the feeling the next day, like it doesn't always immediately go away. You might not be having all the migraine symptoms, but you still might have some lingering pain, and I had that yesterday, and I just knew, like as we got closer and closer to bedtime, I'm gonna sleep so well tonight. I'm not even gonna move, and I could tell by by my sleep score. I barely did move. Slept really hard, really well. Needed that. Trying to make sure I'm taking care of myself, drinking enough water. Dad is no longer in the hospital in St. Louis, so there's two thumbs up for that, and he does not need surgery. There's two thumbs up for that. Amazing doctors there, though, and thank you so much for the love and the prayers and everything. I am so thankful and grateful for you. So now that we put our blush on, in a roundabout way, we can begin this video, and I'm going to start by talking about primers, okay? So we're going to give some primer recommendations, some foundation recommendations, concealer picks, and then also powder picks. For primers, I'd say there's three that I really, really like from the drugstore. If you want to go in kind of a glowy direction, um, add a little glow to your overall makeup look, or even just wear it alone. It looks really pretty on the skin. The Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1 is my favorite. Other things that might be in this category would be like the e.l.f. Halo Glow or a Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter type of thing. This one is my favorite because I feel it pairs so well with so many other foundations. It's really thin and lightweight. Lumi Glotion is another one that I like. If you really want to get a little more bronzy, there are some more bronzy options you can get from that. But this is so lightweight and thin, like you just dab it on off of this puffy tip, twist it up a little bit, dab it on, blend it in. And even if you're thinking, well, Em, I don't want to wear a real glowy look around all day, that's okay. You might pick a more like matte foundation that I recommend, but paired with this, it has a super natural, like really balanced look on the skin. So keep that in mind with the primer and foundation pairings. Just because you pick a glowy primer doesn't mean you have to pick a glowy foundation. It can actually pair really nicely with a matte thing all the way to something more dewy. Um, if staying power is a real concern, this one is your home run from the drugstore. It is the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer with the 12 hour makeup grip. It even has kind of a greenish hue when you squirt it out. It's like a gel. It reminds you of the Milk Hydro Grip. Another thing thing that pairs well with so many foundations, and it's not too sticky. It smooths on 10 times more easily than the e.l.f. stuff, so that's my pick there for long wear. Then I would also say this one supports long wear too, but also kind of assists in the pore blurring. It's the Revlon Grip Colorstay Grip 16-hour matte primer. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit smoothing, I do think this has a visible blurring effect on the pores and makes the whole surface of your skin feel really nice and consistent and really ready for for that foundation on top. So whatever your need, I think there is a primer here for you that could work. Now for foundations, I got a lot of different liquid foundations, but I want to first mention a good stick foundation option from the drugstore. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Shine Free Plus Balance Foundation Stick, and it's really good. 
it has been around for a long time. I remember first shopping for one of these in the Kmart in Macomb, Illinois. You know, when there was a Little Caesars in the Kmart and the makeup section was really close to the Little Caesars and you could smell that crazy bread scent just kind of going throughout the store. I remember having this type of product then, although it wasn't the Fit Me range at that time, but now they've called it Fit Me. It's a really good medium coverage foundation stick, actually. It has a really nice glide. It's not going to be super slippery. I know I talked most recently about this Fenty stick, and it has a real thinness, and frankly, I think it adds a little hydration to the skin as well. This is not nearly that slippery. Think more velvety, but it blends in with ease. It's a nice little touch-up stick as well, and it has this core that helps, like, to combat shine. So if that tends to be an issue for you, you might think about this stick, but for me, it's not my biggest issue on my skin, having shine, but I can still get away with this and wear this for a full day. Enjoy the look totally, and it's definitely my favorite stick that's available right now in the drugstore. I feel like brands seem to have a hard time holding on to those sticks. L'Oreal had a good stick for a while. Where'd it go? You know, keep bringing them back. We like sticks. Now we're going to go light coverage and work our way up a little bit on the spectrum of these liquids. So Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator. Are you a tinted moisturizer loving kind of person? This is the best one from the drugstore, okay? I love this stuff. It's got hyaluronic acid, squalane, oil-free, sheer to medium coverage, which is a really interesting and accurate description because I feel like if you just add a little bit to your skin, yeah, it can look sheer, but it can actually give you a really finished and beautiful, hydrated, lovely look to the skin after you put it on. Um, if you use like the same amount you might use of a standard foundation, I do think you can almost approach medium coverage with it. It's really good. I'm a huge fan of this product. Throw it on for a quick look. You're maybe not doing anything else but a little mascara and lipstick. That's fine. Hello. Still waking up? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Happy Friday. Flossing, flossing. She's flossing back there. Okay, so as I was saying, you can wear this kind of pared down or you can pair a full-on concealer with this product and have a totally finished full face if you want to. So I love this stuff. If you are a lightweight base loving person, look into this one. <laughs> As I look at some of the other foundations I'm going to be mentioning, this next one that I have to talk about is probably the most, like, newcomer to the group. It's the Revlon Illuminance Skin Caring Foundation. I've really been liking this stuff, and I think the nickname for this is the Shortcut Foundation because it kind of reminds me of the effect you get if you use a real glowy primer and then a lightweight foundation and you pair them together on the skin and you've got that beautiful, luminous, lightweight glow. It's very thin. It's very easy to work with but gives you kind of that dewy hydrated look. It's got 5% squalane, hyaluronic acid. So think of something that makes the skin look a little bit radiant, but also doesn't have a thickness to it either. It's not like, okay, I had to slather on something thick to get the dewy look. No, it's light, it's easy, I like it, and I think it's one of the most radiant looking base products I'm mentioning here. Now, stepping it back a little bit to something even more, I think, very natural looking on the skin, Neutrogena Healthy Skin. This is a complete and total gem. I'm wearing this one today. Um, we're talking medium coverage with this makeup. This does have SPF 20 and it's been around for a long time. I would love if they would release one of these with a pump because we don't have a pump. I wear the shade Buff in this. By the way, I am shade 213 in this one, the Revlon Illuminance. I would say a little less glowy than the Revlon Illuminance, but a very similar consistency. This has long been compared to the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation and I think that's a pretty accurate claim to make on it. It looks so pretty on the skin. It actually wears really well on me, but think lightweight, thin, um, not too glowy, not too matte. It's a really nice middle ground foundation-y product, and I absolutely love it. You know, I'll put it on, I'll end up setting it, and then I can kind of adjust my glow. Here you're going to have a little more glow just as is. The L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. I have used so much of mine. I just have a little bit left down there in the bottom. I swear it gives you a little bit of glow, but more coverage than the last couple things I've mentioned, and it wears so well. I've loved pairing it with like this product underneath, a little glowy Maybelline Perfect Factor 4-in-1. It pairs nicely with the L'Oreal Lumi Glotions as well. I have put a pump on mine, by the way. It comes with a dropper, but I bought the pump because I just totally prefer that mechanism. I can be more consistent about knowing how much I'm putting on my skin each day. But skin looks healthy. Skin has a gentle radiance. But it's not maybe as glowy as you might assume and definitely more coverage than I thought it was going to have when I first picked it up. Surprisingly good staying power with this one. I really like it. So let's review. Outside of 
like the stick and the tinted moisturizer here. Most lightweight, most glowy. Still just as lightweight, a little less glowy. A little bit thicker, little more coverage, really in a solid medium coverage with this. And any glow that this has, I think is very gentle and not super obvious on the skin. And then enter Wet n Wild Photo Focus. This is the matte version. They also have a dewy version. To me, dewy is similar to this one, only this one has better staying power for me. I like them both, but this is almost always gonna be the one that I choose out of the two. And I wear this in soft beige. This has the little like spatula applicator. This is a steal of a deal. You know, we're talking five dollars and change for a really good foundation that is um, on the very strong end of medium coverage. So this one kind of surpasses this last one coverage wise and definitely even more of an overall matte finish. But you're going to put this on and blend it out and depending on your blending method, I think if you blend it with a brush, you'll really maximize that coverage even more. Using a dense brush like that e.l.f. Duo Complexion Brush, this is a gem. This is the accessory to anything being talked about in this video. But you pop this on, you're going to be very content with the coverage, I think. Awesome staying power all day. Pairs well with any of the primers I just mentioned. To me, this is a rock solid foundation and it could be very acceptable for people who say, well, I don't like anything too matte, too heavy, or I don't want it to be so light that I struggle to see the coverage. You know, this is a solid middle ground of everything, okay? But I know I got some of you out there and you've been waiting for it and you've been saying, where's the full coverage? Where's the full coverage? I have two full coverage options that I wholeheartedly trust with their staying power. So two real strong points about the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop and the CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear Light Airbrush Finish, or as we lovingly call it, Red Cap. The strong point about these is their coverage and their staying power. Scenarios I would pull these in for if I know it's going to be a long day and I don't have any moment for a touch-up. If I'm doing something that is outdoors and I think there's potential for sweat and the elements, etc., I'm pulling in one of these. There are other good ones in the conversation, don't get me wrong. I'm trying to boil this video down a little bit, but Maybelline Superstay is good. Hard Candy Glamouflage is good, but these have probably been a couple of the most consistent options. So NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Got this in natural. I've got this one in natural beige. I think a reason why they've worked out so well is because neither of these are too thick. Um, they maintain a very like traditional liquid foundation consistency, I think. So it's not like, okay, I'm bringing in the big guns for the staying power and the coverage. Now I expect this thick thing to have to blend out. No, they're nice and thin and light. Um, this one is probably the ultimate queen and this one is like right here with it. You might be in a situation where you have more access or more availability to the shade you need from one than the other. I might gear this one a little bit more toward a normal to dry skin type. And this one might be the top pick of these two for someone who's a bit more combo, okay, or oily. I trust them both. I almost let them babysit my children. No. <laughs> okay, so have you figured it out? Have you found a primer that you think you might like? Have you found a drugstore foundation that you think could work for you on that spectrum of light and glowy to more full coverage? Let me know if you got any questions in the comments section. I'm gonna try to be very on top of it. Um, but we're moving into concealers now. And if you want a corrector, this one from e.l.f., the Putty Color Correcting Eye Brightener. I have mine in the shade Fair. In case you missed the video a couple months ago, we did a really close comparison between this and the Becca and Smashbox, which I've loved for years. And let me tell you, this stuff stands up to it. What you gotta do is put your finger in it and break that seal. You gotta mush down into the cream a little bit. Let the cream get creamier and then you really will see a wonderful benefit from that. I am wearing that in the innermost part of my eye area today, a little bit outside. It has creaminess, it has moisture. I love it so much and it is designed to be worn alongside another concealer, okay? So it's not too heavy, but it really brightens you up. I love that stuff. And then three different concealer options here. If you are dry skin and you feel like everything dries you out and you really need every last bit of moisture you can get out of a makeup product, go for the e.l.f. Hydrating Cam concealer and keep in mind it only takes a little bit by the way shade is light peach for me in this look how much comes out on that doe foot I don't need to put that much on my skin. Okay, a little dot, a little dot, and a little dot. That's all the under eye area should be having. So if you're using this and you're like, it's too heavy, it's too much, use less. 
just use less, okay? But if you're like me and you're starting to have like under eye dryness, you can see those fine lines a little bit more readily. I think a concealer that gives you more moisture is a great option. Now this NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop, I really enjoy this as well. I feel like this can work for my skin type too. This would be something to pull in on those hardcore staying power need kind of days because this is great about looking fresh all day. I am the shade Vanilla in this and I bought it after I heard Bethany Frankel raving about it claiming to have tried everything, said this was the best. And I used it and I thought, my gosh, this stuff is really good. Now it doesn't provide the hydration of this, but it does last a really long time. And if you can use it carefully and use it on a well-prepped under eye, I'm meaning an under eye area that has been moisturized, eye creamed, all juicy and ready to go, this can do an awesome job. I really like it. And it's great for like other random spots around on the face because it clings and it hangs on so well. If you've got discoloration around your nose, if you've got a random spot elsewhere on the face, I think look into that one. It wears so well. And if you've heard what I've had to say and you're like, no, Em, both of those, I've tried them. They're too heavy. They're too too much. I mean, they're full coverage concealers. Something a little bit lighter that I still really, really like is the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. So it comes out of the little pump and this I wear in light. A little goes a surprisingly long way here, but this is going to feel more like lightweight and liquidy. If the standard concealer to you feels like too much, too heavy, this is a really good option and it's a great friend to some of these lighter weight foundations we talked about, right? The Illuminance or like like this stuff here from Wet n Wild. By the way, tinted hydrator, if, if I refer to this as a tinted moisturizer, it still needs moisturizer underneath, in my opinion. But anyway, lighter weight concealer that can still give you really nice coverage. And lastly, you're gonna need to set it with something, right? Um, a couple of loose powder options that I think you could really just take your pick the Maybelline Fit Me. This range is gonna have a little more to it, like I have the fair shade, and it goes down the line deeper and deeper. If you really wanna hone in on one certain shade of a loose powder, maybe look into that range a bit more, but if just basic translucent is what you want, Wet n Wild Photo Focus, this is another awesome option. I could use either or, okay? I like what both do for me, and I use them with my little Amazon Hot Pink Triangle Powder Puff, and I set my under eye with it, and I have gentle generally very good staying power all day long. And then you can set your T-zone with that as well. And for a lot of you, that might be all the setting that is needed, you know, is maybe a little bit lightly on the under eye, a little T-zone and you're done. But if you do want to continue setting a little bit all over the face, or this could be under eye too, the Rimmel Stay Matte, such a great powder. Um, don't be scared of the words stay matte, like, ooh, I don't want to be too cakey. This is such a standard powder here. It's not trying to be powder foundation. You put a brush into it, you dance your brush in here all day. Look what's not happening, a cloud of powder, okay? It's very firm and only so much comes off on your brush. So if you wanna lightly set the rest of your face and oil is an issue for you, consider this. I think you'll really like it. I like the shade um, Creamy Natural and I've used that many a time on my under eye too. And if you've ever seen me or anybody else come in with some something called Kosas Cloud Set. This is a beautiful product, don't get me wrong, I have the shade Airy, and it looks so nice, like finishing a look, kind of coming up on this zone, on the under eye, top of cheek area, where under eye meets blush. It just does beautiful things in that zone. But I swear, this particular shade I'm talking about, Airy, Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in the shade Porcelain. It's doing essentially the same thing. Really similar texture and feel and color, and function on the skin. I really like this stuff too. You might think of it as a finishing touch. You might think of it as the only powder you need. Set your under eye T-zone with it. Boom. This might be your brightening shade. And because this is a really nice formula of powder, maybe you get something that's a little bit more of a match for you, you know, and you can use it all over the skin. Something to think about. But guys, that's it. I got to wrap this up. Those are my drugstore face recommendations. Something for primer, for foundation, concealer, and powder. I hope you got some ideas in this video. I would welcome your suggestions in the comments too if you've had like certain experiences with things and you want to share with others so it can be more helpful all around. Thank you for that and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Have a great day. Bye guys.